my commentary on Ed, Ed's uh, v v video, and um, I trust what Ed teaches. He has the correct gospel. It's faith alone in 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 what Jesus did. Jesus is my personal saviour. My trust, my faith is in the blood atonement of Jesus, and. And in the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 1 to 4, in what Jesus did on the cross for me. And I'm fully p p p persuaded. Okay, let's uh, play. Good afternoon. This video will be able to continue dealing with the live worship salvation, uh, looking at uh, James uh, Melton's work on the doctrine of repentance. The threefold sin of easy believers in the third essay, and then he's got a fourth essay I'll, I'll deal with also. But remember, the whole I lie is that these guys say they can tell, they can look at somebody and say you're not saved. That's what they're trying to tell you. Now, earlier in his, in his book here, he did tell you. He says, um, as the years roll by, the church becomes a great big nursery to lost people and spiritual babies. And spiritual babies. That's, what, that's the issue here. A Christian can be a spiritual baby. Yep. And not bearing fruit. That's what being a spiritual baby means. And then they go back into the idea where well, he should want to bear fruit. He should want to, well, what he wants now, he's not doing it. That's their big thing. So they, they go back to assurance, they switch back to assurance and testimony. That's how they keep switching back and forth on you. For the assurance issue, as a personal thing, you should know you should want, you have an urge uh, to do spiritual things. So that's an issue of assurance, of knowing that. But for testimony, you can't tell from the outside. You don't know what they want to, want to do or not do. That's how they keep flipping on you, people. Yep. That's how they keep flipping on you and, and, and going back and forth and playing a game with you. Oh, yeah, well, he should want to be saved. He should want to stop smoking. Doesn't he? If I stop smoking and stop shouting, he will if he's saved. He will want. Well, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. Well, eventually, well, eventually what? You know how long it's going to take to stop smoking. Has anybody used smoking and uh, shacking up as an example? Well, he should want, well, that's assurance. See, the individual, and to be saved, should say, yeah, I should start the Holy Spirit's working on me. Well, if you screw you in the scriptures. But he's still a spiritual baby. He's not, he hasn't done it. You go to the church in Corinth. You can find, you, you wouldn't know any of the people are Christians there. They were suing each other, abusing their spiritual I'm gifts, my involved in all kinds of licentious, licentious activities. A lordship of salvation is going back to points. These people are lost. That's no, what babies. Paul Malonis is all about. He's a lord of salvationist. If I have to come back to you a third time, I'm going to deal with those who haven't repented of, of their fornication and licentious activity. He never doubts their salvation. Yep. You know, that's the salvation. You people are saved. I know you're saved. You believe the gospel I told you. But according to these people, the Lord's of salvation is, well, you look at these people, they don't bear any fruit. They must be all the laws. But they're those that keep flipping, flopping, going back and forth on you. Assurance is a little different issue. That's an individual issue, and that's a personal issue, whether what you should feel in the sense of the Holy Spirit working on you. But the outside, that's testimony. Let's say a guy continues smoking. That's an example he gave, right? That's a sin. We don't know what he's struggling. He's struggling, yeah, I, I'm struggling, you know, stop the smoking. Well, I mean, besides the addictive act, aspects of it, you know, struggling to give that up. I'm struggling to give that up. You know, I know I should have. You know, you know, I should know. It's a bad testimony. It's a bad testimony. You know, it may, may, may take 10, 10 years to, to, to give it up. So the Lordship of Salvation would come along and say, he's still smoking cigarettes for 10 years? <laughs> you must have to be saved. No, he hasn't dealt with it for 10 years. That's why he can't deal with it. He has, you know, that's a part he has, he has to, he's dealing with that little part. Just like with, uh, you know, with uh, Brian Denning with the pornography. Now, if he says he was saved on a period of time, he's dealing with that issue for years. So you don't have, and, 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 and Melton will come back and say, yeah. See, now he cuts back. And, well, in couldn't years, you get what you see. They think at the moment you're saved, now you should be putting, you know, I want to put, Lord, you know, he's going to control my life. No, your baby. The issue of salvation is faith. Yep. In the gospel. Yep, that's right. And the alternative, and the or two alternatives you give it, heaven and hell. It's not the issue of your walk at that point. What you're going to give up and how you're going to grow. 
You have no idea about that. You're just dealing with one simple subject. Where are you going to spend eternity? These guys want to bring in a whole aspect of, you know, oh, you know, if you're saved, you should want to, you know. Here's, uh, he says here, and, and he says here, uh, uh, one thing he says here, let me find it. Uh, because he goes, his attitude should be, you mean God is willing to forgive me of all my sins? No, God did forgive you of all your sins. Yep. He's not willing. He did. He did. Forgive you of your sins. That's why they have asked. Because they want to make it like God is willing. God died for Christ. That's for us why Paul we Malonis sins. and Jenny Malonis has got salvation he wrong. Well, he did die. They're both phonies. It's a, thin, it's a done deal. After that, or after all, I, or, all that I've done, now he got saved as fifteen. What do you think about all I've done? Fifteen. That was a testimony. He got saved at fifteen. You want to make these guys like they're just you know people bums, you know, or you know big fornicators or something like you know all some involved more kinds of sin. What the hell have I done? God convicts you as a sinner that you're dead now. You're all sinners. But that, that that becomes no longer an issue anymore because now you all that just leads you to the point of knowing you need a savior. Not to focus on how bad you are as a sinner, but to focus on the idea, hey, I you know, I deserve to go now, I'm going now if I don't get if, if I don't get a savior. And of course Jesus Christ is that savior, and then you believe in him. And that's where you uh, receive the imputation of his righteousness, and he because he's took he took on your sin on the cross. Exactly. The he, he, he took your sins on the cross. He took them all. Yep. The only issue is now what you're missing is his imputation to you by faith. Yep. So this is what they get in. Wow. What must I do? Well, that question was asked. Acts sixteen thirty one. The only thing said there was saying one word repentance. Said believe. Be Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Yep. Wow, what must I do? I'll do anything. Just tell me. Well, the only thing God tells you is to believe. He does tell you. He says, okay, believe. Exactly. So, let's do that the threefold sin of easy believism. Easy believism, whatever that means. Now he goes, he's going to quote John 1, 11 to 13. <coughs> Interesting, again. Big issue on repentance. Repentance isn't even in John. The word repentance doesn't even show up. Our text speak, uh, speaks on the subject of believing on Christ. It states that people do believe on Christ while others do not. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that do believe on Christ, it says, are born of God. See, it's belief. Believe. That's it. Believe. You see, it doesn't say anything about opening your heart. He's getting about opening your heart. No. It says believe. Believe is trust. Who are you putting your faith in? Who are you putting your trust in? John Carly you gave me in? the wrong gospel. They can actually be called the sons of God because they've been born of God. But the passage states more than that. It also defines a very important Bible word, a word that is found in the Bible over 300 times in its various forms. That word is the word believe, which simply means trust. Yep. Many folks today, especially Christians, have a very shallow understanding of what the word means. No, we mean we don't mean trust. <laughs> they want to they want to make it something it doesn't mean. They want to have actually a connotation of of, of obey in there. That's the little the word. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to say believe means really obey. That's what they're trying to sneak in there. They're trying to sneak in the meaning of, well, when you believe, you know, it really means to obey. You know, it means to believe. <laughs> it means to trust. Uh, but, uh, but there's no excuse for the ignorance. The Bible defines the word very well uh, for here, right in uh, John 1 12. Believing is receiving, plain and simple. Well, believing is, is how you receive. That's how you receive. When you believe, you receive. Okay, we read John 1, 11, 13. He came, to his, he came unto his own, and his men received, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's how they received him. Okay, they received him by faith. But believing means that's how you have access to grace by faith. Yep. These are, uh, which were born of, uh, were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, but, nor the will of man, but of God. So he says here, uh, just as one receive a gift uh, from someone, such as a birthday uh, present, uh, how you receive, how you receive the free of salvation by faith. That's what he told you. He doesn't receive Christ by merely, merely saying that he received Christ. No, he sees Christ by, by believing. 
such as in repeating a prayer. Well, of course not. See, now he wants to leave our faith. Yep. Now it's the issue of saying a prayer or something. No, the issue is, did you believe? Exactly, eh? The sinner receives Christ when he opens his heart and allows Jesus to move in and begin ruling a brand new life. Where did that come from? Where does that come from? The only thing you told in John 1, 11, 12 is you receive by believing. Yep. Appropriate grace by faith. Yep. It's not opening your heart. Exactly. And letting Christ eh? rule. Move in and begin, uh, begin ruling. Does Corinthians want well God rule anything? That's for someone to be killed. If you're a baby Christian, you're not letting God Christ rule anything. Now you might feel it next like, That's the point of growth. <coughs> Does that allow the idea of well, Christ begin to rule my life? When I have to smoke him, I take a look. See, he, now, when Mount Moss says, oh, I think you guys should see He should see something. Where, where's this time period come up? The Corinthians were doing all kinds of stuff that were not Christian. They were carnal. They were not letting God rule them. They were just being everywhere. But they were still saved. They were babies. They need to grow up. That means that Lord Jesus Christ has been seated upon the throne of the heart and the old life is nailed to his cross. That's growth. That's Romans 5, 6, 7, 8. That's growth. That's still your flesh now. That's your two natures. That's learning about your old nature, learning how to deal with your old nature, learning about the power of the Holy Spirit, learning about yielding, yielding to the Holy Spirit, learning about confessing your sins, 1 John 1, 9. That's growth. Yep. That's a long That's a process. And your process not only learning, stopping things you used to do is also starting to do things you should be doing. But that's the process. And you, some people, you know, never grow up. They never get out of the flesh. They stay babies the whole Christian walk. And God cuts them off. You know, after a while, and just says, you know, you're not growing. Uh, you know, or reverting you, you've gone backwards. Anything less is something less than salvation. See, worship salvation. You know, and then, they, and, and then you know, Brian says, oh, where did the word come from? That's what we get. <laughs> he said, you know, if you get saved, you have to put Christ as ruling of your... That's not, that's not an issue. The only thing the issue is that salvation is, are you choosing heaven or hell? Yep, that's right. See, that's where Paul Malonis and Jenny Malonis and most to, of the people at North Right Church get wrong. That's the only issue, not how you're going to live. That's the issue in the worship salvation. They confuse the salvation event with the Christian walk. They, they take the two and make them one. And that's not how it is. It is a salvation event, which is an, it's an, an issue in its own. Its own issue. Uh, basically, the only issue comes in, and I don't believe it, is faced with one or two choices. Choose Christ or choose hell. <laughs> that's it. You know, your choices. It's not about how you're going to live. It's not about, well, you do this, you should want to give up this and live up this and do it. Yeah, that's not the issue. That comes after salvation. Now you're born again. Now the Holy Spirit can start dealing with you as a baby and get you start growing. Uh, says anything less than something less than salvation is something that will not give a man wor a, worth, a life worth living. Well, that's true. <clears throat> if you don't live a Christian life, basically a miserable life. But you still want to have it. Because that isn't the issue. The issue isn't how you're going to live. Because the issue now, after you, after you get saved, the issue is are you going to have rewards in heaven? Got yeah, your whole life planned out right. for you. A wonderful life. Some people, if they're short, make it modern. But the issue is now bearing fruit in terms of their rewards in, in, in the judgment seat of Christ. Yep. That becomes a separate issue. That becomes bearing fruit. Those are the things all laid out for you to do. But you may do it, you may not. There are many Christians who are going to be in heaven without any fruits. Brian has admitted that. Yep, that's right. I'm sure Mountain has done that. Uh, you know, has done that. The judgment seat of Christ. There are Christians at the judgment seat of Christ who are not going to receive. I haven't read Mountain for a long time. Uh, I used to uh, listen to all those tapes and stuff, so I have, to, I have to go back and look at it. But every Lordship Salvation who says that is denying Lordship Salvation. If you say that man can get to the judgment seat of Christ without having any rewards, then you're saying that uh, he, he won't bear fruit. And he can lose it. First John 3 talks about losing your rewards. 
That shouldn't be possible. The Lordship of Salvation is. Uh, it's something that will keep him out of a burning hell. See, two different issues. A life worth living and keeping out of hell. Two separate issues. Two separate issues. You can have a miserable life on earth and get saved. Because you're, not, you're having a, a joy that God has set out for you. Because you reject God. You start moving your own direction. And uh, living in the flesh. Living like the world. Living, living you know, uh, you know, all these things you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. And God, a wonderful life a walk plan for you, wonderful things, blessings to give you. Peace with God. That's the most important thing. Peace with God. Assurance of salvation. You lose all that. You lose that all, all that when you reject God. No question about that. But that's the definition from going to heaven. He, he ties the two together. There's a term that I'm going to uh, use to describe the, this less than salvation doctrine that rules in many churches. I didn't invent the term, and it might be a better term to use, but many have used the term throughout through the years when speaking on this subject. So I'll stick with, stick with the standard term terminology. That's why we use worship salvation. Standard terminology. Brian goes, it's not in the Bible. He does easy believism. <laughs> he uses that. Exactly, Ed. He does one millennial either. He uses that word, too. Uh, the common term used when dealing with the subject is easy believism. Some uh, some don't like the term because it could be used to imply that salvation isn't easy. Uh, but I trust that context uh, in which I use it will make the, my intentions clear. But salvation is easy, yes, but we need to not make it too easy. <laughs> See, easy not. Make it too easy. You either trust or you don't trust. Yeah, exactly, Ed. What's easy than believing? Nothing. Nothing. Because the merit lies with the object. Not the subject, not us. All yep. we have to do is trust. Yep. He did all the work. We're exactly. That's how easy it is. Yep. That's why all these terms are used uh, uh, as analogies, metaphors for believing, you know, looking and drinking and eating. Nothing easier. Nothing easier to do than those things. Yep. And these guys want to say, "Well, no, you have to open your heart, and you got to do this, and back your world to make God love you." But of course, if it, now these guys are not Calvinists like Melton, but it's what Calvinism links up to so easily because if God's doing it all, yes, it would be easy. God's the one day doing it all. So he's going to give you that desire to make God, you know, Christ your heart, you know. And so it's, it's very Calvinistic in that sense. And like guys like MacArthur, uh, you know, can use it because it's just sense and, and uh, James White. Because, yeah, well, God's doing it all, so, yeah, you know, yeah, if you, you know, that's, uh, but if you believe in free will, that, that's a whole different issue. Then. Because you have a whole some nature, you have this, this human spirit, and now the issue becomes your walk, and that's volition. That's the volition. The gospel is volitional. The walk is volitional. Um, okay. He goes on to the issue of a soul winning. I'm not going to go through that. One uh, says, I want to deal with the threefold sin of easy believism. Three things that are terribly wrong with this kind of evangelism that I just illustrated. Uh, you know, it's basically somebody like a guy who gave him, didn't give him the true gospel. The issue is, is, is uh, as a person believing the true gospel. That's the only issue. Not the issue of easy believism. That's a false issue. The issue is, and, and they bring a sinner's prayer language, which, which you reject. The issue is, are they believing the gospel? I will reject the sinner's prayer. That's all. It's not hard. It's Paul easy. Maloney's because the gift is free. Trust in his. Paul Maloney's is the so biggest thing. It gives the loss a false sense of security. If a man is lost in his own way to hell, uh, then he needs to know it. That's true. He needs to feel God's wrath hovering over his head continually. That's true. He's a target of God's wrath, and he needs to know it. That's true. This is what uh, brought out in Psalm 7, uh, Psalm 7, 11, 12. And that's why the, one of the great dangers is the closest gospel, because they preach eternal security. Most Christians do not believe in eternal security. Baptists believe in it. That's really a you know, doctrine we hold to. Calvinists preach, uh, preach per perseverance of the saints, which is different, because you'll come back. So the security is a very small group that teach that. We teach the, and the Baptists. Now he's, so, and that's why you look at the closest gospel guys. It's very dangerous because they haven't really believed the gospel. But they do preach eternal security. So they get the guys locked in and say, well, I believe eternal security. But they haven't believed true gospel. They're not believing on the death by resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're believing on the, the, the promise that Jesus Christ will give eternal life to whoever believes on him. That's not the gospel. That's it's the, the gospel correct. 
but we'll get. And I trust it finishes. Uh, uh, the wicked man needs to feel the guilt says. of sin, approaching judgment of God continually. The, the Christian duty is to remind him. The Christian's duty is to remind him of this continuing and emphasize that Christ is only hope. Um, he says, I've knocked on doors and had people tell me they were saved because they had experiences like that, the one I just described. Um, let's see, let me go back, I guess. Uh, Jesus said, The Holy Spirit will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. John 16, 8. This is obviously in keeping with the spirit of uh, Psalm 7, 11, 12. Remind the sinner of the wrath of God that abides on him because of his sins. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son have, ever, have everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Let me be clear. You either believe or you don't. That's not yep. opening your heart. Exactly. Eh? <laughs> These guys will go to scripture and write over it. It says believe. Believe or don't believe. That's it. Yep. If the wrath of God abides in a man, then, uh, then uh, that man might uh, ought to feel it. He should know daily that, uh, that things are not right between himself and God. He should constantly feel the convicting and power. And I certainly do on, believe, on Ed. So he can yep. move the, so can move the true repentance and a genuine, genuine, genuine con, uh, conversion. See, now he wants to say, well, see, uh, you know, you're not really saved. And so, you know, because you haven't really had, you know, a genuine conversion with the repentance. No, he believed. Yep. John 3, 3, 3, 6 says about believing. Good. You believe or you don't believe? Exactly, Ed. And I believe... Uh, the last thing he needs is for some easy believer, a believer to come uh, come along and welcome to the kingdom of God from repeating a little prayer. See, we don't say that. Free grace people. No. Who says that? I'm free I grace. Jack Howell's crowd, crowd, I guess. That's, uh, got that name. I'm a fr that's free that's grace cool person, you know, Paul Malonis. Back of souls. By saying, say his prayer, and we know you're saved. Well, that's the issue, that's the issue of prayer, sin is prayer, which we reject. The issue is given the gospel. Have they believed the true gospel? Yep. And you shouldn't be giving a person a prayer. Should they really believe that? You believe that? Like uh, the issue of the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip. That's the issue. You got a person to the scriptures, you say, yeah, I believe it. Yep, I it's believe it too. Persuading on that Christ died for sins on the cross, yep. was, was buried, rose again from the dead. Yep. And. He's trusting in Him, Christ Jesus, Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, as a personal Savior. Savior, yep, perfect. Um, I've knocked and on the door and people tell me they've seen well. they had experience yep, the like that. Blood of time and of Je Jesus. True gospel. They didn't believe the true gospel. Uh, thanks to the sloppy work of a bunch of naive and immature Christians, well, according to them, they wouldn't be saved. Why do you call them Christians for? If they give them that type of gospel, you would think they wouldn't be saved. Such people are now going through their lives with false sense of security. They think they are saved because the Christians uh, told them they were, that they were. And you think because, you think of, when God knows they're not saved, you think that they're not going to get the wrath of God on them? They just won't know why, why it's still there, but they'll still feel it. They'll still feel God is still working on them. So we're not really saved. <laughs> so we can keep, our, keep pounding it. But uh, yeah, the idea is, well, you know, well, God knows. And believe if the idea is if you save and you're not doing fruit, then God's still dealing with you. He's dealing with you now as a son from when he was 12. He's now chastising you. Yep. So you could be a lost person or you could be out of fellowship person. Yep. Thanks to the work of, the, of ignorant Christians, the Holy Spirit has been quenched in their lives. Wait, the Holy Spirit has been quenched in their life. Well, they won't have the Holy Spirit. And they're on their way to hell while thinking just the opposite. Well, you can't, you can't quench the Holy Spirit in their life. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't say it. Exactly. It's sloppy. A Christian can quench the Holy Spirit in their lives, and then God be dealing with them. But they're not on their way out. That's just, they're eternally saved. Okay, so... I hate Lord Jesus salvation. Spirit, you can't quench the Holy Spirit if you, as an unsaved person. I hate person. the false gospel. Now God would give up on you. Say, well, I'm done. If, you know, you said no, and... Just leave you alone. So, you know, basically that, that's it. You know, uh, the point, same point is, you know, you reject the gospel enough times, boom. Uh, but that's in question the Holy Spirit. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They just rejected the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is enough, you know, just, they've hardened themselves. You have to give the devil his due, that's a pretty subtle plan. 
Two, it's an insult to God's intelligence. It is the duty of all Christians to be God's representatives on this earth. 2 Corinthians 5.20 even says that we are ambassadors of Christ. This means that we are supposed to properly represent God to the lost and dying world. That's right. That's why we don't preach lost of salvation. Tell people they have to do something they have to do. Yep. Tell them the only thing they have to do is believe. Exactly. This well, means that we're supposed to properly on. represent God to the lost and dying world. We are sons of God who expect to represent uh, the Father. And our Father. With this in mind, it's not, it, it is, is it not a gross insult to the Almighty's intelligence to suggest that he would be duped into granting sinners the new birth on the basis of merely repeating a vain, non-repentant prayer? <laughs> no, he's not going to be duped. The issue is not the prayer. The issue is whether they believe the true gospel or not. Yep. So you keep making sure it's a stupid prayer. We, 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 we grace people don't believe in the sinner's prayer. I don't. Reject the sinner's prayer. I re reject the sinner's they, prayer. These guys yep. didn't say a false, they, they said a strong man. They said it's easy believers in it. Like they go easy believers in it. Oh, people want to have the sinner's prayer. You don't say that. You say you believe the gospel. But the only thing you have to do is believe. Yep. Not put Christ on his throne and, and, and uh, you know, and, uh, open your heart and ask Christ in your heart or, or say a prayer. We're saying you're just you're trusting in the gospel, the true gospel. And yep. then you're saved. And then your walk begins. And that's a separate issue. Yep. And you can take two routes, one or two routes. You can either grow or not grow. Yep. If you stop growing or don't grow, uh, you'll look like a lost person, like a lot did. You'll look like a lost person, but you still be saved. Just like being yep. Corinthians. These guys never deal with, want to deal with the Corinthians. They never want to deal with the Corinthians. Paul been there twice, and they, people are still not repenting of the lascivious, licentious lives they were living. They saw people dropping dead in front of them for messing around at the Lord's Supper, and they still wouldn't repent. That's how strong this flesh is. But they were saved. Yep. Uh, I remember a certain preacher speaking about this very subject and trying to justify his easy belief tactics. Comparing his converse, quote unquote, to fruit that wouldn't pick from a tree, he said, You know, people accuse me, uh, accuse us of picking our fruit too early, but I'd rather get picked early than not get picked at all. Uh, no, Paul said, Paul said that uh, he, uh, he planted and uh, Apollos watered, that God gave the increase. So winning is God's issue. We just put the truth out. God does all the work, God does everything. You know, He brings, you know, so. And you might say, the idea is that Paul planted, Paul Apollo swore person I'm going to get saved the first thing he hears the gospel. Maybe the second time, some other person tells me he's already, he's already, it's, it's the Holy Spirit's been working on him. Say, yeah, 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 okay. And, and it could be a long period of time. Various subjects, he's hearing scripture from here, he's seeing scripture here, he picked up this, he looked at that, and all of a sudden he's ready. And the person comes along, he's ready to just, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to believe. And that's it. Just like, you know, Philip being lead to the open unit. He was ready, ready to believe. Yep. He just had some questions about Isaiah 53. He was ready to believe. Obviously, he'd heard something before that. Philip didn't have to give him a whole gospel. Philip had to explain some of Isaiah 53 to him. Who's he talking about here, Phil? But he was ready to believe. He had heard. He was ready. And he was, he was thinking about himself, about, about it himself. Uh, and that's what the Lord will do. The Lord will bring the right person to that person and get him, give him the information he needs. Uh, let's see here. Can you see the vain mindset that these people have? God is completely ignored as they press on with their totally human endeavors. Yeah, there's a lot of big thing about getting numbers. That's always your Jack Kyle's church and, you know, you know, looking at, you know, we've got many people saved, you know, and they count numbers. But the issue is you don't know. God knows. Only part of the responsibility we have is getting the right gospel out. These guys are irresponsible because they're not getting the right gospel out. Of course, the gospel people are irresponsible because they're not getting the right gospel out. The easy believers the people, what they call easy believers in them, who want to just, you know, get go along with, as they said, just give them a little prayer, so beside a prayer. They're irresponsible. The responsibility, our responsibility is make sure a person hears the correct gospel and tells them exactly what they must do to be saved. Based on Acts 1631, the question, what must they do to be saved? I will tell you. Believe. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Yep. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. resurrection. The blood atonement. Yep. Christ died for your sins on the cross. Was buried and rose again from the dead. Yep. And Jesus is and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal, personal savior. savior. Yep. That's it. Don't have to. No, that's it. What about that? No, that's it. 
Well, what, uh, this guy, oh, that, 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 that's it. <laughs> Want me to say a prayer? No, no, don't say a prayer. Don't say a prayer. I don't need to say a prayer. If you believe you can say a prayer as a safe person. Yeah. Thanking God. You say, thank you, you say, I agree. You eh? want to say a prayer, say, thank you, God, for saving me. Yep. That's a prayer. But don't say a prayer to ask. Yep, Try exactly. Ask. No. You know, it's not be quite, no, go ahead and tell you to ask. Believe. Yep. It's so simple. People fight against the people. They fight against. They can't believe it. They just keep going. To, what about? No. Believe. What believe. about? No. Believe. believe. Can I do? No. Believe. Yep. And what's the issue? The content of the gospel. That's the issue. Are you trusting Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross? Yep. And in order to do that, you have first you have to believe your sin. That's right. That goes with the other. If you don't think you're a sinner, you don't think you died for your sins on the cross because you don't need you don't need someone to die for your sins on the cross because you don't think you're a sinner. But once you recognize you're a sinner, you say, well, yeah, and someone had to pay for that sin. He paid for that sin on the cross. Yep. He was physically buried in the grave. Yep. He physically rose again from the dead. Yep. What's the resurrection show? Justification. Shows that the Father was satisfied. Or what Christ did. So he's risen. Now sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's supposed to believe that. That's what he did. This is Ephesians 12, uh, 1, 12, and 13. Tells so he's on the, the, the Ephesians. And then you're supposed to trust in Jesus Christ. You're putting your faith in him as your personal Savior. Nothing else. Nothing else. That's why people fall apart. They say, well, yep. you can believe that. Just that. No, 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 no. Because... There are people who can believe that, and that they're still trusting in something else. They're trusting in water baptism. They're trusting in sacraments. They're trusting in a lot of other things. And, oh, yep. yeah, I believe in that, but I'm also trusting those sacraments to get me saved. I'm trusting in that ba water baptism. i got to get that water baptism to get saved. You know, I'm trusting in, you know, this, you know, this, that, the other. No, 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 no. no the only thing you're trusting you is a person. Redemption isn't a person. And so... It's trusting, you're trusting in Jesus Christ because of what he did for you. You yep. believe what he did for you, and they say, yeah. He, that's the only way I can get saved. I can believe yep. in him. Nothing else. That's faith alone. Yep. In and Christ I agree alone. totally with uh, So, Ed. the truth of the matter is that many souls have been saved in spite of easy beliefs and tactics, not because of them. True. God is always interested in like, well, I'm sorry, maybe we <laughs> doubt the gospel and God still straightens it all out. You know, we're so, we're so fouled up, you know, mankind. You know, we get everything. God, God gets in there. He wants the guy saved. He's going to get through right. He, he's, you know, well, ignore that. Get this. Get this. Uh, so a lot of people say, so, well, you know, a lot of people come back and say, well, I, I was saved. I said a sinner's prayer. God just got through to you without, he got through you before he got to sinner's prayer. So it makes, doesn't make the sinner's prayer correct. You hear that all the time. Well, yeah, I was told this, I was told that, but you know, I said this, and I know I'm saved. You know, but said that sin's been nothing to do with getting saved. Exactly, Ed. Inviting Christ in your heart had nothing to do with getting saved. Yep. All those things, the Holy Spirit just get through. As I said, we use chick tracks. Chick tracks, all that garbage in the back there. Guy gets saved. You know, there might be one aspect in there that says you know, you quote uh, 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 Acts sixteen thirty one or something in one in the chat. And that would be that would be what it takes to get so somebody will come back and say, Well, I gotta say what you trust. You didn't get saved with the back. <laughs> you got saved before you got to the back. So you always hear somebody say, Oh, yeah, I did this, yeah. Hey, you got saved one way. If you're saved, you got saved one way, because there's only one way to get saved. Yep. Don't tell me. Oh, well, you know, I got saved by sin my sin's prayer. I got saved by, you know, uh, Romans ten, nine, and ten. And Romans I quote upon lame laws, I could say, oh, I know I was saved. You won't save by Romans 10 13. You won't save Romans 10 9 10. You can't get saved Romans 10 9 10, Romans 10 13. You can't. Yep. You can't. I agree. And anybody tells you they are, they can't, you, they're lying to you. Yep. They're phonies. That's why That's they ignore Romans what 10 they 13. Are. Paul, Malone, Paul Malone is a phony. Romans 10 13 is, is a prayer. And prayer is for saved people. There's the exception you're praying, you know, as long as I believe you want to get the gospel. You want to get the gospel, and then God will get you the gospel. But that's not what Romans 10, 13 is saying. That says, if we're, whoso, whoso shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, uh, you still have to believe the gospel. So God will get you the gospel. You still, you're still responsible to believe it at Cornelius. So, uh, let's see here. 
If enough of the gospel uh, message is presented to show Christ to a lost person, the Holy Spirit can use that to bring a man to salvation. That's right. That's why lordship of salvation is also often avoided. Yep. The Holy Spirit gets through before lordship of salvation is presented. Even though the naive person who worked with Benzo backwards in efforts to botch the whole thing with, with his, do you want to go to heaven to repeat this prayer nonsense? Or a lordship of salvation nonsense like, uh, well, you want to get saved, you, you ought to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you, you know, you'll be willing to change your life and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, make your prayer and be sincere and ask God to save you. It's, it's, you know, it's fine generally. You know, he rejects faith alone, so he's got to say, oh, you got to ask, you got to ask, you got to ask, you know, you have to be willing to, you know, and this, that, you know, and you have to really feel, you know, when you, you know, when you're broken, you come to Christ, oh, broken, I'm broken, you know. That Brian nonsense. Denlinger is a phony. Uh, Paul Malonis is a phony. Jenny Malonis is a phony. Anyway. Yeah, because the sinner believes. And the Lord will block us. But that doesn't mean that's legitimate in teaching that garbage. Okay? It's not legitimate to teach that garbage, even though God can still get a person saved despite the garbage. That's the problem. And that's who I'm going after. I feel they're offended. So I was saved this, by this. I was saved that thing. He said, no, you got saved one way. No, I got saved with a sinner's prayer. I got saved. No, you can't save with a sinner's prayer. You got saved, saved despite the sinner's prayer. I got saved with a church rack despite the church rack, church rack in the back. back. They got saved somehow. People come out there and they get their own emotional thing. And they say, I got saved. You tell me I'm not saved. I'm not telling you you're not saved. I'm telling you that's saved one way. If you're saved, you got saved one way. You didn't get saved for Romans 10, 9, 10 or Romans 10, 13. If someone told you to say that, you got saved, you, and you're saved, you're saved before you said that. So you made that prayer. That's what you get. You got a lot of people in there. Well, I know I'm saved, and I know I did this, and I did that, and I did this. You got saved one way, because there's only one way to get saved. So don't come back to me. And the reason I put these videos is not because I'm going after people who think they, 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 got, they, they said these things and did these things. But it teaches who are teaching this garbage. So you can get saved a lot of different ways. Okay, in the sense of methods. But it's only one way you can get saved. It's only one way, only thing, one, one, one gospel. It's only one gospel. So you go through a chick track. There's a gospel. And God's, you know, so death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and trust and believe in Acts 16, 31. He's got, he's got the, you know, 1 Corinthians, uh, you know, 15, 3 and 4 in there. And combine those two, and the person, yeah, that's, I'm, I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm from the sins and cross, and both are getting dead, and, he's, and you know, and, and I'm trusting in Jesus, I believe in Jesus Christ, and you're saved. And then you get to the answers, well, well, it's 10, 9, 10, and well, it's 10, 13. And then you think, well, I must be saved because I said those, I believe those. No. You got saved before that. Yep. It's about you're believing in, in the Lord Jesus you know, and, and the saved. gospel, well, a lot of the true gospel. tactics, I should say, were in the sense of getting different people. Methods, as as he's pointing out here, but it's only one gospel, and it's not the Lordship of God's the gospel. It's not the crossless gospel. You got to trust in it's the First Corinthians fifteen three to four, and that and, and, and point down with me the vain. You believe in vain. That's why you want to look at uh, First Corinthians fifteen seventeen. The vain is if you trusted the one gospel. Yep. Isn't your faith is the problem? The problem would be the gospel. If yep. Christ hadn't risen from the dead, it would be a false gospel. Yep. That's what Paul is talking about. That's why I won't read the whole passage, the whole chapter. You've shown that. First Corinthians 15 is talking about a Christian walk. He's explaining the Christian walk, and that goes back to Romans, Romans uh, 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 6. The issue of the resurrection and Colossians 3. And Colossians 3. The resurrected life is putting, living as if we're already in heaven. Uh, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. Set your affections not on, on things above, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. That is what 1 Corinthians 15 is discussing. If yeah. the resurrection is true, that is what we're supposed to be living at. A resurrected life that's the maturity when you can put your put yourself in that level and maturity one uh, uh, the old uh, old uh, great movie in the uh, uh, 12 o'clock high and this is this is born out a lot of uh, history 
the guy would say, you know, uh, you know, going through the combat there, he, the, uh, the, the colonel says, look, you got to consider yourself dead already. So you're, you're, you're thinking about going home. You know, you're here for the tour of duty, it's a war. You're thinking of going home, you're thinking about getting through this. What you have to consider yourself is dead. You're dead already. So that's it. You know, that's it. You're, 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 you're not, and that's that's the way so you can deal. So you can deal with the stress. You can see yourself, you know, hey, there is no tomorrow. There is no you know, going back. There's no going home and everything. So that's the way he had to view that, to get through that stress of combat. So you can see yourself right there. And that frees all that. So how are we supposed to consider ourselves? First Corinthians 15 is not talking about eternal salvation. The salvation there is talk, talking about the issue of the walk. Keep these things in memory. In memory, you'll be saved. We're still in my memory. If we're talking about eternal salvation, we have to keep it, we believe in eternal security, we don't have to keep these things in memory in order to be saved. Because like you're saved. The memory has to deal with your growth. If you want to walk correctly, you have to keep these facts, truths in your mind. So you can walk the correct walk and live a resurrected life. Um, let's see, God just ignores all that mess on occasion and saves the sinner anyway. That's right. Uh, when he sees a ready heart, but the uh, easy believe personnel, personal walk a worker does very little to get the, the heart ready. Now that's the problem. He's got the issue of conviction, but he might not necessarily have to have that. As Paul says, he you know, and he quotes here. Paul planted and Paul's water, so you know the person might already be under conviction. But the gospel is, that's what Romans is set up. Gospel is put, put a person first on the conviction. You can't skip that. So you have to find out the person really is on the conviction. You understand your sin. You're on the way to hell. Okay. And the person says, no, I'm, I'm not sinning. Okay. They, they ain't got to deal with that issue. So if the person says, yes, I understand I'm a sinner. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that. Okay. You don't the conviction issue. Now the issue is getting the person saved. Um, but the easy believe person, a personal work, it does not really, does not, does very little to get the human heart uh, ready. That usually is done by someone else. Okay. Um, the easy believer just happened to be there on time to plot the right food. Okay. Well, <laughs> God put that person there. Uh, you know, Paul, Paul planted and Paul awarded. It doesn't matter. They both share, by the way, in a reward. They both share in a reward. So, I mean, the reward's about the, the witnessing and, and, and getting a uh, soul saved. They're all going to share in it. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave me increase, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. The plucker isn't even mentioned. Well, the plucker is, of course, the Holy Spirit. God gave me increase. He's the, he's the one plucking. Okay, so the one, the uh, the person who's given, the person I'm telling the person to believe in. But that person is not, reading a prayer is not getting the person saved. And the person says, well, now, what you have to trust in, who you have to trust in. That person gets, he gets, he says, yeah, I pray. Someone obviously test, gave testimony to Ethiopian eunuch. All Philip had to do was, he go about plucking the food. He, he, he just came, yeah, I'm going to show you Isaiah 53, who that person is. The person's ready to be saved. Um, a wise plucker knows this, but the easy believers pluckers think that everything hinges on uh, hinges on the high pressure tactics. No, God is a lot smarter than that. Okay, uh, two, a gross waste of valuable time. Ephesians 5.16 says that we ought to be redeeming the time because the days are evil. Rather than invest time in edifying the church and building up some strong soldiers from the Lord, see, that's edification. That's, that's growth. Yeah. That's what the church is for. The church is, is for growing babies. Preaching sound doctrine. Yep. Not getting people saved. Um... See, the easy believers spend church, countless hours pounding on the door and tallying up professions. If one soul gets saved, it's, it's worth it all. They say, never stop and consider the damage they are doing. Well, I just saw winning and it's growth. So, of course, these are all soul winners. But the fact is, you, you win souls outside the church. You bring saved people inside the church, church to grow. Yep. That's the way of ordinance of baptism. Water baptism. Water, water baptism is to be able to make sure these persons when you get in the church understand the gospel. You're not baptized, if, you know, in the church 30 years, you baptize me, you brought into a local church. After he's been saved, so I want to get baptized, like the Ethiopian unity, and he says, well, okay, now you explain, the, the, the pastor will be explaining, okay, what do you believe? And, you, and he explains to what's going on here, to, with the ordinance. 
for a short while it freezes um edge okay, of the uh, video. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. Yep, it's fine now. Okay. We'll stop here. When it goes on another nine minutes. Um, every summer our church blesses the uh, Oberlin County with 1,000, 2,000 gospel tracts. We've been doing this for over 20 years, and thousands of people have received a clear and scriptural presentation of the gospel in track form, not at the gospel he's preaching. That's not the true gospel. One night we were there and we ran into an easy believer that, that I know, easy believer that I know. He and his crew have been around the fair, fairgrounds and getting people to say the sinner's prayer. Hate the sinner's prayer. Okay, so it's not, not true gospel. Uh, we've had 12 people saved tonight, he said. To the best of my knowledge, those, these, uh, 12, those 12 people never came to church, never were baptized, never turned from their sins. Well, they could be saved. Now, it's that false gospel, but that's not the criteria of them being saved enough. Yep. They still could right. be saved. So, them going to a church, getting baptized, or turning from the sins is not the issue of that whether they were saved or not. The issue is, did they believe? Then, yep. the issue of what they did after that is a totally different issue. Yet, he thinks his time was better spent than ours because uh, he got 12 people to repeat a vain prayer, and you're, pre you're, you're putting on tracks of a false gospel. <laughs> so. In his view, we wasted our time by distribu distributing 1,500 tracks instead of running around bugging people who were trying to enjoy the fair. Now, the track, if you had a correct track, that'd be fine. Because, again, it's planting and watering. So a person would get the ground pl plowed by a track or even get saved by a track. Right? You know, people get saved by tracks. So there's various te techniques, you know, that uh, can be used. But a track has to be correct you know, and, 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 and explaining. Like the track, you know, uh, the idea of you know, Romans, first four chapters, five chapters of Romans, uh, dealing with the issue of, of, of con condemnation and then, of course, um, the gospel. Explain the gospel and, and uh, uh, what you have to believe in. Okay. Um, the truth is that we respected their time and money by giving them tracts that they could read at their convenience. So he's really defending the idea of tracts because the tract has to be accurate. Yep. His tract wouldn't be accurate because it's teaching the worship salvation. Yep. A false gospel. He stole their time by being rude and forcing them to listen Pull to my sales pitch that gave them nothing but a false security. Well, you know, two false gospels. <laughs> I've been among yourself. A worship salvation Your gospel fry, and a uh, attacking easy, believe, easy believism because they give them a sin's prayer and that way you going. See, the issue is the true gospel, which is faith alone in the true gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and trust in Christ as your personal Savior. That's the true gospel. Can you do anything more than that? No. Are you told to do anything more than that than believe in those, those issues? No. So when a person tells you about saying a prayer, that's false. It tells you a person says, well, you ought to be willing to give up this and Put God, you know, and uh, they won't have to say the sinner's prayer or invite Christ into your heart or uh, 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 call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, you know, that then that's false gospel. That's, that's right. false gospel. It is. You're not told to do those things. You're told to believe. North Road Church, you're false gospel. Trust. Phonies. What are you trusting? You're trusting Paul Malonis and Jenica Malonis. He was again from the dead. And him as your personal savior. Or you're trusting in that you said a prayer, or you, you know, uh, you know, you you were willing to open your heart up to Christ, you know, ask Christ into your heart, you're willing to do this, you want to do that. See, false gospels. Yep, that's right. All they do is take a different tact. And when one false gospel is looking at the other false gospel, so your false gospel, and the other guy's looking at your false gospel, and both are false. Yep. There's only one way to get saved. Believe. And it is Romans 10, 9, 10. And says, that's what it says. That's the salvation. Yep. You never told to confess Christ as your personal savior. You get saved. Yep. You get saved the moment you believe in Jesus Christ. Yep. Confession would come after. So it can't be part of it. And you only, you only mentioned one time all scriptures. What's the other time I mentioned? John 12. Who's that told the Jews? Yep. Why are they told to confess to get out of the synagogue? According to Acts 2, you see exactly the problem with the Jew was getting out of Judaism. Yep. Why? To avoid the wrath that was coming on. Romans 9, 10, 11 are palatinical. Discussing the Jew. You get up to the point, the person gets saved, and still say, well, what about the Jew? Is God done with the Jew? 
Romans 9, 10, and 11 explains exactly how God is dealing with the Jew. He's not done with the Jew. That's what he says in Romans 11. So if you people think your God is done with the Jew, you need it. <laughs> That's, you know, Stephen Anson. Replace him with theology. No, he's not done with the Jew. It gives some corners of God without repentance. He's not done with the Jew. He has a plan for the Jew. And he uses, uses the church to get the, some Jews saved. They look at the Christians and say, wait a minute, yeah, we're supposed to have that. And they say, yeah, we get saved. We're a Christian. We get saved. We'll stop here, put this up, and we'll do the fourth uh, issue uh, the, uh, and um, uh, probably next week. Yep. And uh, again, remember, so this is not complicated. They've made it complicated. They confuse insurance with testimony. That's what they keep calling us. Well, Christians should feel this and should feel, you know. And then they say, well, see, I know I can, I can tell a Christian is a Christian by what they do. You can't tell a Christian what he, what he does. You, you think you do. Yep. That's right. The testimony is very important. But you only you can, you can, you can't be absolutely sure. And they admit that. They admit that. And then you can have people who, who are actually faking it, pretending, who have lost people who are actually doing the things like look more, look Christian. And you could think they're saved and they're not. Yep. And then, you know, that's why the people left, like, you know, John McArthur Church and says, well, that person must not have been saved. We don't know if he's saved. They said, well, maybe he wasn't saved. <laughs> he said, but, you know, then he, was, then, he was, then he was pretending. He was pretending he sure fooled, you, fooled everyone else. But the issue comes, like, the issue is they, they combined salvation the event with the walk. And they said, well, you know, if you got the salvation event, the walk, over, they overlap. But in fact, they're two separate issues. One is the vent, and then the other is the walk. You begin like babe, but birth, a childbirth. Your life begins at childbirth in the sense of that's when you actually begin now growing in as to become an individual person. And that's what you celebrate birthdays in that sense. And basically, your spiritual birthday is the day you're born again, and now you begin your growth your walk yep. as an individual a son of god as an individual christian now you begin your walk it's not that's that's the event and now that's now is your growth there's your walk and the two have to be kept separate because you can go astray on the walk and still be saved that's what they want to deny well if you really say you won't be doing this and this now again you have got to go back to assurance because you tell to an individual believer you said yeah the holy spirit should be working on you Dealing with you, chastising you. There are things that are signals. You should be bearing fruit. And if you're not doing those things, then you should ask yourself, are you Christian or not? Then the ultimate question, what did you believe? Have you put your faith in a prayer? Have you put your faith in confession? Have you put, put a place in your faith in some other issue? Other than simple faith in Jesus Christ for different the cross and uh, his blood atonement and uh, in him? Yep. If you're trusting Jesus, if you have believed in the true gospel, then the issue becomes this whole then you can reevaluate well, there's something more in my walk here. Why am I following my walk? You know, maybe you don't understand the issue of two natures. Understand the world of the Holy Spirit. You don't understand uh, confessing your sins. You're out of fellowship all the time. For a lot of reasons. But salvation is simple. It was made to be simple. These guys have complicated it because yep. they want to get psychiatry in there. They want to start looking at people and say, I got I got I have to be able to know this guy. Say, you can't know. Yep, that's right. For sure. You might think he's saved, but he might not be. Yep. You might not think you might think he's not saved, but he might be. So we'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you. Okay, Ed. I I, I love watching your, your your videos, Ed, and I trust what what you say, mate. Okay. Thank you.